Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at how to work with rows and columns off of a grid node in geometry nodes. Sometimes you want to do something like work with every other column or every other row, but figuring out how to select them might be tricky. So let's dig into it. Here's a simple geometry node tree. I've added a mesh grid and set the vertices to 5 and 5. In order to make this work, the first thing we need to understand is how the vertices are laid out in a mesh grid node. When we add a mesh grid, it's centered at the world origin and lays flat on the XY plane. I'm going to go into top view, and from here, this is what we're looking at. Over here, we have negative X, positive X, positive Y, negative Y. The index numbering of these vertices starts in the negative X, negative Y quadrant, right here. And then they're numbered like this. So if we want to select every other column, we'd want to select these two columns. The question is, mathematically, how can we select these two columns? To get the columns, the first step is we're going to divide each index by the total number of rows. So we have five rows here. So we're going to divide each index by five. And here's what that's going to accomplish. So because of this, all of the values in the first row go from zero to 0 0.8 and are less than one. The second row goes from one to 1 1.8 and is less than two and so forth and so on. So now if we take this floating point number and round down, you'll see we have a very useful number left. So now all of the values in the first column have become zero, the second have become one, the third have become two, and so forth and so on. Whenever we want a repeating pattern, this is when the modulo operator comes in. The modulo operator is also known as a remainder operator. If you recall doing math when you were young, you would do something like seven divided by three is equal to two remainder one. Well, that remainder one is actually the modulo. So what we can do here is use the modulo operator on each one of these numbers. We can have our index say I modulo two. So zero modulo two, we say zero divided by two is zero and the remainder is zero. One divided by two would be zero remainder one. 2 divided by 2 goes in one time with a remainder of 0. So when we're done here, we would end up with the first column having a result of 0, then 1, then 0, then 1, then 0. We can use this as a true and false selection in our nodes. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we did was take the index. Input, index. Then I divided by the number of rows. The rows are represented by the Y vertices. So I'll add a math divide node and have my index divided by my number of Y vertices, which is five. This isn't great having these two values separate like this. So I'm going to add an input integer. I'll set this to five and then connect these up like this. I can control my Y vertices with this input and my division will change accordingly. The next thing I needed to do was round down. I'll duplicate this divide node. I'll change the mode. Under the rounding section, we have floor. So I'll plug my division into my floor. The next thing I did was take the modulo. So I'll duplicate this again and change the operation to modulo. And I'll change this value to two because I want every other row. So since this is zero or one, I can use that as a true and false for my selection. Let's go ahead and add something for this selection to do. I'm going to add a geometry set position node and I'll plug this value into the selection. Since I'm dealing with columns, I want them to go up and down. So I'll just adjust the Y offset. And there we go. Now let's select some rows. Going back to my original numbering, I'm going to want to select rows like this. So what we would like is for these numbers to ascend in the same pattern going upwards. Anytime you'd like to create a repeating pattern, you can use the modulo operator. So if I were to take my index and modulo it by the number of rows, so in this case five, I would get zero, one, two. So as you can see, that puts us in really great shape. So just like we did with our columns, if I then modulo this by two, I end up with this. 
And so sure enough, I'm back to having a nice selection. Let's do that now in our node tree. First, I took my modulo and I moduloed by the number of rows. Then I moduloed by two. In this case, we want to move these along the X axis. So I'll go ahead and offset this by the X and then connect up my selection. And now if I go ahead and hook them both up, you'll see that I can control both the columns and the rows. If I wanted to make this into a reusable grid node with a selection output for the rows and columns, here's what I would do. I would go ahead and select all of these, include the grid node, and include the index. Then I would press Control G and I'd get this. I'll go ahead and pull the rest of the grid inputs over to the group input. I'll open up my side panel, go to group, and I'm going to move the vertices Y down. Our divide floor modulo was for columns. So that's this bottom output. So I'll change the bottom output to column selection and change the middle one to row selection. I'll go ahead and tab out of this and I'll name this grid plus. I'll press the fake user button and I can append it into other files and use it whenever I want. And because our selection operators and our grid vertices are both driven by this input, when we change this, our group will still work. So I hope this was useful and I hope you learned something. But most of all, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. If you're enjoying the channel, consider subscribing. But until next time, I'll catch you later.